Well, I was sitting outside for a second and this awesome thing came walking by me. This is a striped hawk moth caterpillar. It is super cool and there is a massive thunderstorm coming in so I decided to make him a little box for the storm because he was kind of wide out in the open so he probably was not in a very safe spot. Here, I'll put my finger up next to him so you can see how big he is. Just huge. Looks like he's... So, I can't remember if I showed you or not. I have a clip I can add if I hadn't already, but I found a caterpillar right before a torrential rain. So I grabbed him so that he would be safe. And I did some research and he's a white line sphinx moth, which are a species of hummingbird moth, which are one of my favorites. So I grabbed them and put them in a container. And then the next day I found a second one. Again, right before a giant storm came in and they were hanging out over concrete eating all of the grass over there but they were clearly about to pupate but there was nowhere for them to go in the concrete because sphinx moths actually burrow so I grabbed the second one got them set up in here with a bunch of leaves that they would like I found the host plant so that helped and <laughs> they have burrowed they burrowed about two or three days ago and now if you look you can see a tiny little cocoon in there. Well, I guess it's really not tiny at all. I mean, these things were probably longer than my finger. So I am very excited to see these two come out and release them because hawk moths are one of my favorite animals. I was a little excited to find those guys kind of harder to see this one but if you look right in that crack that dark brown in that crack is the other one so I will keep you guys posted on that front but I'm pretty excited about that all right everybody I've been waiting like three weeks for this day and they finally came out of their cocoons where are you Oh, they're so pretty. Here, let me see. These are white line sphinx moths, and they are absolutely beautiful. Um, their underwings, which they have covered at the moment, are bright, bright pink. And they're absolutely beautiful when you see them flying. They're actually a species of hummingbird moth. And I'll, I'll include a couple pictures, but you can really see why they're called hummingbird moths when they're flying. And they feed the exact same way, but I've been waiting for these guys to come out of their cocoons for quite some time so here's the first one and we'll get the other one out right now we're actually gonna take their buckets over to my girlfriend's grandmother's house because she has a really big garden yeah and here's the other one. Oh, they're so pretty oh that's so cool Yay! Alright, well I'm going to get a bunch of pictures of these guys really quick and then we're going to load them up so we can take them out and I'll be right back. Alright, we have reached the place where we're releasing them. We wanted a bunch of pale flowers because they're fairly nocturnal but at night they will go after pale flowers because they're easier for them to see. And these moths are unique because they eat only nectar. So... I think we are about ready to let them out. Oh, before I forget, another important reason for letting them go, now that it's evening, as you can see it's getting dark out, is that they are not poisonous like most butterflies, so they are very easy targets for birds at night. They're not gonna, they're too big to be eaten by bats or anything like that, so makes it the right time to release them. All right. They should be ready to Where go. Did they get these? They were caterpillars. There you them. are. See them? Somewhere like, in there. Yeah, they do have wings underneath them. Oh, they're so pretty. Hi, Yeah, they're called hummingbird moths. Mm. They're white line sphinx moth, but they're a species of hummingbird. I can get a fish or. Yeah. Yeah, of course. All right, so he might just fly the moment I try to do this, but. Duck and cover. Come on, buddy. You want to climb on me? Oh. Oh. Is his foot stuck? 
No, he's just. Well, he is lightly pink on his body. Oh, you're so cool. Now's the time for the moth memes. <laughs> moth math. Regan was obsessed with the yes. moth memes. I remember oh, that, yeah. Ee, you're so cool. Do you want to? No, it's okay. I was oh. busy slamming my Careful, careful, between. careful. Here, we'll just do this. The jug of water. And oh, see, look at the pink, look at the pink. Oh, yeah. pink, pink, pink. Try and get him to fluter again. again. Do you want a fluter for me? There we go. <laughs> they just hatched like a couple hours oh, ago. Oh, 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 come on. Oh, oh where are you? Oh, he's on me. Oh, <laughs> all right. Oh, wow. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, yes. Yeah. There you are. Oh, you're right there on the ledge. <laughs> Let me get a good one of that, too. Oh, they're so pretty. I know I am. Thank you. <laughs> You see his eyes? Here, you're eyes. moving too much. <laughs> oh yeah, look at them. Oh, they're so Little cool. Little eyes. I'm so they excited. Like oh, he's so pretty. I think he's still growing his wings. Should we leave him in the bucket for a minute? Yeah, I mean, he'll leave him alone. Yeah. Or I could put him in the dirt right there. In the flowers? Yeah. I mean, we could. Either one. And then the minute you try, he's gone. Do you want me to hold your phone or something? He's like? so cool. No, we'll just put him back in the bucket. For now. Yeah. Okay. Just take it. The other one was like, I am done with this. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> okay, buddy. Come here. Come here, babe. Come here. Come here. Oh, they're so cool. I love them. He's is drumming. On the inside? Yeah. He's thrumming his wings. He getting is. Ready. He's getting ready for his Stretch first flight. Out. Oh, that's so exciting. He, he's like thrumming them. My babies are all trying to see if he'd fly. Oh, 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 there we go. Yay, see the pink? Oh, he's freaking. Is he? Yes! Woo. Oh my gosh, where'd he go? Right here. He's right here. There you are. He. Oh! oh. <laughs> and he's gone. Goodbye, my child. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, well that was super satisfying. I'm going to show you guys how to set these up if you ever want to do this yourself. The season's pretty much over for this year, but hey, there's always next summer. So yeah. I hope they took off. You guys, yeah, oh yeah, they're, they took off. <laughs> they were ready to go. Okay, so now that you've seen the success that I had with mine, I kind of wanted to explain a few things before I get into, you know, how to make your setup for them. And that is, hawk moths can be very, very, very fun, because unlike, you know, butterflies, you can keep butterfly caterpillars too, but they will never let you touch them, whereas you can actually handle um, hawk moth caterpillars and hawk moths themselves a lot more than a butterfly would ever allow you to and they come in a wide variety of colors I can include a few pictures so you can see what I'm referring to there is generally about three and a half, no not three and a half, two and a half batches per year and um, so they'll breed in the early spring and produce caterpillars which will you know cocoon up and then come out breed again in early summer those ones will, well I guess there's three and those ones will cocoon up and come out in the end of summer and those ones when they lay their eggs those caterpillars when they cocoon they will bur burrow deeper than normal and actually winter over and then those are the ones that come out at the beginning of the spring so at this time of year about August to eh, late August and August to about October if you find those ones do not keep them unless you are prepared to 
keep them kind of cool so that they don't come out prematurely because there's not really much you can do for them if they come out in the middle of the the winter because they are pretty much exclusively nectar eaters so <laughs> you can't really go buy flowers or create a garden inside for for hawk moths so they kind of have to be released but they can't be in the middle of the winter that being said spring and the spring and midsummer batches are perfect for for keeping and as is the case with mine um, it actually gives them a better fighting chance because in Montana around July we get really really bad heavy heavy like torrential rain and a handful of hailstorms and that can be really hard on them and thin numbers out so you're actually giving them a better chance to come out into July or August which is the drought season which is perfect for them because they like the heat and they actually are fairly nocturnal so they'll operate more in the evening anyway so all of that being said when you find your caterpillars you want to just get a, a container Tupperware works but it's usually not enough room for how big those caterpillars can get I mean they're easily about the length of my finger if not longer so you definitely want to have a good amount of room for them to kind of maneuver what I did is I actually went to the dollar store and bought <laughs> these are actually cake toppers and then use the bottoms as lids and that way it doesn't make an airtight seal so you don't have to add air holes and actually I would recommend against adding air holes because it will dry out your soil a lot faster the next crucial crucial point is you have to find the caterpillar finding the host plant can be difficult unless you literally find it on its host plant but there are a few ways that make it pretty pretty easy and that would be go to the area where you found it and grab uh, three or four of pretty much every leaf type that you can find and watch closely because they will only eat their host plant some are way pickier than others some aren't that picky but they will only eat a specific range of plants I found that mine really liked tree leaves actually there are some uh, oh, I think they're aspen that are out behind the shop and they that was pretty much the only thing that they would eat so I just made sure to load up replace everything daily don't let leave old dying leaves in there because they'll only eat them fresh and it is a good idea to in the summertime take them outside every now and then just the containers don't open the containers obviously but that helps to create some humidity inside of the container which is really important and this soil is actually up higher than it was when they were in here and I'll explain why right now um, hawk moths don't actually hang their cocoons on branches in the way that butterflies do they'll actually burrow under loose soil to form their cocoon and then come out when they're they are ready to you know come out as moths so when that time comes when they burrow you want to take everything off literally anything that is in there other than dirt they're not going to obviously eat while they're in their cocoons so make sure that there's nothing there that can cause any mold to form and once they hit that stage you don't want this dirt to dry out you want to keep it just ever so slightly moist the the damp is even too far you want it to be wet but not very wet at all so I bought oh where is it I guess I'd already moved it <laughs> I brought a, I bought a little spray bottle that I used just to hold up really high above the the soil and mist very very lightly once every two or three days you don't again you don't want it wet you just want it the, the slightest bit moist and then that will help keep the humidity up but again too wet and it, it will grow mold that will kill them or too dry and they'll dry out and never come out of their cocoons 
once they have a couple days to harden up, they can be safely moved into these, which are just five gallon buckets. And the reason for that is you want a good amount of space for when they come out to put sticks that are gonna be eh, probably up to here from the bottom, which may be hard to tell on this, but about six to 10 inch long. And the reason for that is when they come out, they pump fluid from their body into their wings and that's what actually inflates them to the size that they size and shape that they will have for the rest of their life but if there's anything touching them even lightly when they inflate they will be misshaped and they won't be able to fly so it's really important that you have a good perch that's pretty high up for them to hang on to as they dry and then from there, you just wait until the sun is setting and go let them out. It's really important to do it at sunset, not in the middle of the day, because they are not poisonous like a lot of butterflies, so they are easy, easy targets for, for birds. Most hawk moths are too big to be preyed on by most birds, but, you know, things like crows, anything about that size can still prey upon them. You could probably hear in the video that I was freaking out when I got to see them flying because it was so dark I was afraid that I wasn't going to get to show in the video their, uh, their beautiful underwings because their underwings are bright pink and they feed just like a butterfly with a, a proboscis and yeah I was very excited that I actually got to capture that on camera. And I'm probably going to hold on to these because like, there's still both of their cocoons in both buckets. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. But yeah, I hope that helps and gets you ready for spring. So you, if you want, you can get, you know, your own hornworms and hawk moths. Social media like Instagram and Facebook, which I'll leave links to in the description, because I'm always posting some random rock, shell, and fossil related stuff. So, yeah, see you next time.